you will help me let you, well, how many of you will let me help you uh, build something good in your life this morning? Amen. I, I'm really praying about this message because I, I'm, I, I'm hoping I don't get a lot of haters after the service today. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the jobs of a pastor is not just to teach, but when he teaches, it can get into your business sometimes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of you like for, for, you know, pastor just to get into your business? Well, I guess what I'm trying to go around and say is we're going to talk about uh, something very important today, and it's called discipline. Everybody say discipline. So I know, I know uh, we might get some squirming going on or whatever, but if you haven't been with us, we've been teaching a series on Sunday mornings that we're calling Keys to Life. Now, Jesus said in John 10, 10, you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and, then, uh, and remember, Jesus said in John 10, 10 that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life. Everybody say life. Now, that word life in the Greek word is zoe. It means the God kind of life. So Jesus came to give us the God kind of life 24-7. You can have it every day, the God kind of life, zoe. It's, it, it means the life that, that is overflowing. It's abounding. The Amplified says until it overflows. We are supposed to have the kind of life that, uh, it, the, in other words, the life of God affects us in every area. The life of God will affect your finances. Amen. Because if it's life, that means it's going to be flourishing. There's nothing about the life of God that is negative or death or destructive. The life of God will help you in your finances. Jesus said uh, the word actually teaches us that the word is spirit and is life. Jesus said in John 16, uh, 6, 63, actually, my words are spirit and life. So when we're getting the word on the inside, we're getting life. And he said, you can attend to my words. It's life unto your health. So, so the life of God will affect you physically. It'll give you some strength. It'll give you a boost. Amen? And so we want, we, we're talking about keys to life and how important uh, those keys are. So think about if we have life available to us, then there are going to be, uh, 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 key is, uh, keys open doors. Keys represent authority. Uh, Jesus told Peter, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Well, that was for the church. And that he was talking about authority. So there are keys that we have to understand and then begin to operate in our life. And, and just like you take a key and you begin, to, you begin to unlock some things. And the main key we want to get is some revelation in these different areas. So we, so far we've talked about uh, prayer. And we said that's the power of life. We need to be people who pray. If you want to have power in your life, you, you need to be a person who prays. That's a very important key. You need revelation about the importance of, of praying. We've talked about relationships. Everybody, you know, uh, needs good relationships in your life. The best relationships that you'll ever uh, develop and uh, uh, work with are those that you meet in church, those that you connect with in Christ. I mean, thank God for relatives. And, but, you know, the, the, most, the best relationships I've ever come across or, or have even been beneficial in my life and in others was uh, involved in, 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 in the ministry or in, in walking with God, just being in church. How many of you met some great people in church? I've met some great people, beautiful people, uh, because I was in church and just being involved in church all my life and then being in ministry. But, you know, if I wasn't pastoring, I would still be in church on Sunday morning. I would be in church when the doors were open anytime something's going on. I'm going to be involved because that's where the relationships are. And then we talked about change. I mean, you know, change is the way of life, so you have to be changing. You got to be open to change, willing to change, changing. Uh, we're, we're, we're a people, who, we're actually being changed into his image from glory to glory. So we've talked about desire. Desire is the motivation of life. These are all, you can go get, look at the, all these on, the, on our website, on our page. But, but you know, uh, desire is the motivation. How I many of you got to have some motivation? You got to get up in the morning with some motivation. You got to have something in front of you. And so we talked about desire, and that's why you need to have vision. Vision's the blueprint of life. We talked about vision, how important vision is. Without a vision, people perish. And we talked about faith. Last Sunday, we talked about faith, and it's the force of life. So you got to learn how to operate uh, these different keys. So just get a big picture of uh, this little key ring with all these different keys, and, they're gonna, uh, and you need some revelation in all these areas. All right, so this morning, we're going to talk about discipline. Everybody say discipline. Now, what is discipline? Discipline, we're going to refer to as the strength of life. So think about it like this. If you don't have much discipline, you're going to be weak. And now weak meaning uh, discipline, think of discipline is in the area of strength. Now, let's look at the scripture that I gave you here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Notice what Paul said. This is a very, I'm going to read out the Amplified for time's sake. Paul said it like this. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run your race. How many know we all have a race? Several Wednesdays ago, we were teaching on Wednesday nights about running your race. 
and the importance of how we run and running with endurance. And, uh, and, and if you just hung around here in all the services we have in a year, you, you should be growing. Amen? And he, so he says, run your race that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours. Now every athlete, now watch this, who goes into training conducts himself temperately and restricts himself in all things. Now, how many of you just get the picture of this athlete? When they're training, they're training, they're, they're doing what they do. They conduct themselves uh, uh, with uh, temperance, with control, all right? And they restrict themselves in all things. They do it to win, to win a wreath that will soon wither, but we do it to receive a crown. So in other words, he's saying, he's referring to this as something that we do in our spiritual walk, in our race. We do it. Why do, we, why do we discipline ourselves? Why do we restrict ourselves? Why do we want to live with some control because we have a crown that we're going to receive? I mean, that's what we're after. We do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither away. So he says, therefore, I do not run uncertainly without definite aim. I do not box like one beating the air and striking without an adversary, but like a boxer. Now listen to what Paul says, I buffet my body. He didn't say buffet my body. He said, I buffet my body. Amplified says, I handle it roughly, discipline it by hardships, all right, and subdue it. How many of you found out you're going to have to subdue your body? <laughs> your, your, your flesh is your flesh, eh? all right? So, so he says, to subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit. To stand the test to be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit, all right? So uh, listen to what the New Living Translation says. It says, he said in verse 27, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should do. Now listen, you need to know this is very important. You have to train. When we're talking about discipline this morning, we're really uh, dealing with some training. Let me just give you a few, uh, a few antonyms uh, of, tra- of, of discipline. Because as I was going through this, I was thought, wow, it, this, is, this is where the rubber meets the road for a lot of believers because we, we don't like to talk about these type of topics. We want, we want kind of the candy and the shouting and the running and the healing and the blessing. And, and, but when we're getting into this area right here, that's why I said it's going to get into some of our business. Um, well, before I give you these, let me, let me just tell you what Paul said to Timothy. 1 Timothy 4, 7, he says, But have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for women. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. Notice he says, Paul says, you need to discipline yourself. Everybody say discipline. Who's going to discipline? Well, now, now there are people in our lives who discipline us. But Paul, as a leader, or as you get to a point in life, you have to discipline yourself. Everybody say, dis- look at your neighbor and say, discipline yourself. Discipline yourself. Discipline, now let me just give you a few things. Discipline is control. What is discipline? It's control. Everybody say control. Now think about that. Discipline is control. How controlled are we in different areas of our life? See, many people are out of control. I'm talking about believers now. We're talking to the church. A lot, a lot of believers. Now we know the world's out of control. And people without a vision are just running wild. But, but many people are out of control. Probably more than ever before. Uh, out of control in their finances. Out of control with their kids. Hello. I mean, you, you got to discipline some kids. You got to train. We're talking about training. We're talking about discipline. Out of, I mean, things are out of control. People's bodies, habits, things are out of control. Their minds are out of control. This has to do very much with our minds when it comes to discipline. All right? So discipline means, uh, discipline means to make yourself act or work in a controlled or regular way. It also means to teach somebody to obey rules or to behave in an ordered or controlled way. Say an ordered or controlled way. So that, that, that's, that has to do with discipline, teaching people to, to obey rules or to behave in an order. How many of you parents taught your kids to, to uh, uh, these were the rules, rules of the house? You, you teach them to obey or to behave in an ordered or, I mean, you, know, uh, you go to the store and you see some kids, they don't know how to, how to behave in a controlled manner. They're out of control. And parents, a lot of parents are afraid to discipline their kids out in public. But, you know, if you go ahead and train them right at home, you won't have to deal with them out in public like that. I mean, every once in a while, you've got to straighten them up. But, but you know what? When you get back to the car and you go, all right, we're we getting down to business right here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, now, let me give you a few, some antonyms. In other words, this is the opposite. Now, when we're talking about what we have to have in our life, this is what's going on if we don't have discipline. Uh, negligence. Without discipline, 
You have, you're, you're being negligent. Ignorance. Everybody say ignorance. Chaos. Now, now I'm, I'm going to get into some of this here in just a minute. Everybody say chaos. So without discipline, what is there? It's chaos. Uh, confusion. Think about some of these words. Chaos, confusion, negligence, ignorance, disorder. Is God into any of those things? No, no. Disorder, uh, permissiveness, uh, disorganization, neglect, agitation. Has everybody ever been agitated because you couldn't find something that you knew was in there? But it was out of order. Or you forgot where you put it, or maybe you just didn't put you just it was under the stack. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Y'all, y'all, you, we've all tried to find something that was in the stack somewhere. We knew it was in the stack, but actually it wasn't in the stack. It was in the other stack. <laughs> right? So think about it. Think about it. He said, teaching somebody to obey rules, behave in an ordered or controlled way. You know, when it comes to uh, child training, and we think about discipline, we think of discipline in our own life, but discipline, again, that someone is training. You gotta, you've got to see this. We're all about being trained and developing and growing and uh, uh, discipling. Uh, it's, it's amazing, but, but parents, I'm, I'm concerned because I think parents aren't disciplining their children, teaching them discipline. It's a parent's job to teach and to train. But when you've got kids, that, they, don't, they don't never make their bed. They don't know how to do a dish. They don't know how, you know, you know what I'm talking about, a dish, cleaning a dish. They, I mean, you look at them, they, they don't know how to take out the trash. Listen, you can never take out a giant until you learn to take out the trash. I mean, but knowing how to just pick up after yourself and, and have some self-respect. And, and uh, you know, I, I remember I was just thinking about when, when I, my roommate and I we were in college, and I wasn't like super clean, but when I was in college, my roommate and I, we, you could walk into our apartment, and we had a clean apartment. My room was, we, man, we, we took pride in our place. I mean, if you walked in our apartment, you'd, I mean, we, we were cool. I mean, we had these big round, remember those round futons? We had a couple of round, we called them, we called them the boats. But, but our apartment was nice. I mean, our kitchen was clean. We, we didn't live like pigs. Or you could say we weren't lazy. Y'all don't mind if I get in some business this morning, do you? I'm trying to uh, say, Lord, help us. Help pastor this morning. Because you know I love you, right? Let, let me give you some discipline. Discipline is an orderly, planned, and effective way of conducting all the affairs of life. Think about it. It's an orderly, planned, and effective way of conducting all the affairs of life. You know, that has to do with being on time. Being on time. You're going to be meeting up with somebody. You're doing something. You're on time. Everybody say on time. So an orderly, planned, effective way of conducting all the affairs of life. You know, when we're disciplined, we have strength and blessing. But when we're out of control, there's confusion, there's defeat and discouragement. I mean, you know, listen, I think the reason some people are so confused is because, uh, like this, you walk into their house and their whole living room is in confusion. The bedroom is in confusion. If you walk into your house and everything is in disorder and out of order and it's chaos, that's a, you, you know what, God don't like it in there. I can tell you why, because God is a God of order. There's nothing, heaven is, a, heaven is a place of order. Let me tell you something about church. Sometimes you hear people, and so I'll give you something, you can give them some ammunition. Some people say, well I, well, I just don't believe in organized religion. Well, listen, the Bible says in church, Paul said, in everything happens in the church, it should be done decently and in order. That means there should be, a, it should be planned out, it should be good, it shouldn't be chaotic, and nobody knows what's going on. There should be, a, a, it, there should be some things in order. Decently and in order. Our home should be decently and in order. Our finances should be decently and in order. Our kids should be decently and in order. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? This is very spiritual. We want, matter of fact, you know, uh, one of the fruits of the Spirit is self control. Proverbs says, a man that's without self-control is like a city that is broken into and without walls. I'll tell you right now, I, you could take me to your house, I could walk into your house, I can look in your car, and I can tell you about your future. Because if I walk in and there's chaos everywhere and the bed's made and you got 40 cups on the nightstand, you know, bottles everywhere, stuff's under the bed, everything's a mess. Uh, listen, I can tell you, God can't bless that. And you aren't going to go any further until you get some discipline 
in your life. I mean, you can have, I mean, what, we, can, we can be very disciplined in some areas, but you know, your, your body, your, your mind and body a habit is created because you begin to do something and your mind connects with your body, and so you create a habit. And you can have some habits in some areas and taking care of yourself and certain things, but, but you know what? You have to have some self-discipline to, to vacuum and, and, you know, take care of your stuff and keep it in order and because God can multiply that. God can't bless you if it's not organized and in order. I can tell you all really happy with me this morning. I said when we're out of control, there's confusion. There's defeat and discouragement. Out of order has to do with chaos. The Bible says in the beginning, when the Holy Spirit was hovering over the faith, the world was just, in a, it was just chaos. There was just, it was nothing there. So God had to speak and put some things in order and create some order. Everybody say order. So in other words, I'm just saying our life, number one, we should be in order. We should have some discipline. We should have some things. We should know what we're doing, why we're doing it. Amen. Our house, our, our, front, our yard is not one big weed. Come on now. You know, you shouldn't be able to fill up a, a five-gallon trash can from the stuff in your car. Take the bag and... Pfft. You know, but really, if it boils down to it, you're just lazy. Waiting for somebody else to clean up your mess. Come on now. One time my wife, you know, and, I, and I'll just tell them in a minute. One time, you know, we first got married, uh, my wife, she always, I, I had some shoes laying around. She's going to tell me, eight pairs, she says. You know, I had work shoes, and you got your gym shoes. And, but anyway, she just decided to line them all up right in front of the bedroom door. And he, well, that was some order. But, but you know, the main thing is, is learning to just realize that, you know, God, uh, God expects us to be people of control. I, see, we said discipline is strength. How many know Jesus had a lot of strength? He was, he was very disciplined. Whether it was his prayer life and what he was doing, understanding where he was going. Let me put it like this. Discipline should be seen in the way we think. It should be seen in the way we speak. It should be seen in our study, in our work, eating, our lifestyle. It just, it affects every area of our life. We want to be people of order. We want to be disciplined people. All right? Think about this. And now again, back to our mind. Paul said it like this to Timothy. First, 2 Timothy 1.7, he said, For God has not, and most of you know this, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and what? Sound mind. But did you know other translations for sound mind say discipline? Think about that. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and what? He's given us a spirit, a really, when he says a, a sound mind, that has to do, discipline has to do with strong, firm, and stable thoughts. I'm, 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 I'm not just running, and, and, and I'm, I'm a disciplined person. Go ahead and say that. I'm a disciplined person. Now listen, Colossians 2.5 it says, for though I'm absent in body, nevertheless, Paul's writing, he said, I'm with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good discipline and the stability of your faith in Christ. Notice that discipline goes right along with stability. I'm going to come to that something in just a minute. Notice, do you ever notice the word disciple is similar to the word discipline? How many of you would call yourself a disciple of Jesus? Well, that means that you have an element of discipline because a disciple is one who disciplines himself to follow and live like Christ. Living like him. A disciple is someone who disciplines themselves. You have to do That's why you, you discipline yourself to get up and go to church. And you discipline yourself to read the word. You discipline. In other words, you, he said, Paul said, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. In other words, nobody's going to do that for you. If, you want, if you're going to end up in the godly zone, it's because you disciplined yourself to live godly. You pursued God. And you disciplined yourself to live like him. So that has to do with, uh, if you looked at another uh, synonym of discipline, it would be self-government. You have to see yourself sometimes in teaching leadership or, or when I go overseas or different places, sometimes I'll talk about in the area of, you have to, you're, you're, you're the CEO of your life. So, so you're, you're, you know, I'm Bracken Christian Ministries in a sense that uh, there, there's a package here. Are we in order? Spirit, soul, and body. Are you, under, you understand what I'm saying? Listen to what Jesus said when it comes to being a disciple. This is what disciples do. 
Matthew 4, 18, And walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, and they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat, with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left the boat and their father, and they followed him. Everybody said they followed him. That's the emphasis here, is they followed him. To follow him is to discipline ourselves to follow the word. You have to follow the Word. You have to discipline yourself to do the Word. I mean, that's the whole key. That's the key, uh, I mean, of of just doing the Word. If we can just do the Word. Proverbs 12.1 says, Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. But he who hates reproof is is, uh, stupid. That's what this particular translation says. So discipline. You you know, we have to be people who who like... We have to... uh, Really, we want to. We want to. We should allow discipline to encourage us. We think of now, if I just said, "What's the first thing that you think of when you hear the word discipline?" What do you think of? I asked my wife. I said, "What's the first thing you think of when you hear the word discipline?" And she said, "Hardship." I said, "Yeah, that's exactly what Paul used that word in the Amplified. Hard discipline with hardships, or or uh, maybe we think of uh, uh, training, order." This is very godly. This is very spiritual. Go ahead and smile. Hey, don't lighten up a little bit. We're talking about discipline. You ha- no, God's not going to discipline you in a sense of making you do things. Now, in a sense of, uh, uh, I said last week, now here, here's something because I want to come back to this remind. Last week when I was talking about the three areas of discipline. If we don't judge ourselves, the Bible says we'll be judged. Number one, the word judges. Number two, if we continue in wrong, then our consequences, God allows the consequences to teach us. And then number three, it says we're disciplined for, in a sense of that, that some people die prematurely. It's not that God is doing it, but he, he, we open ourselves up to the enemy, to be attacked by the enemy. Uh, and so it's not, again, it's not God doing it. God doesn't discipline us in a sense. He puts something on us to, to try to teach it. No, he, the Holy Spirit's our teacher. God doesn't put sickness or disease or, or, or circumstance, you know, and he's trying to teach you. No, he doesn't do that. We open ourselves up to the enemy when, when we're in sin. So think about it like this. When it comes to discipline, uh, God dis- disciplines us through his word. That's, that's the main way God's going to discipline us. And we have to want discipline. We have to, we have to uh, delight in discipline. Amen? Uh, man, I know you don't think of discipline as a good thing when your parents disciplined you. But how many know they disciplined you because they loved you? That's what Proverbs says. If you love your children, you discipline them. You teach them. Discipline is training. We need so much training, it's ridiculous. Everything in our life is about training. We need to be trained. Taught. Discipled. God is not involved, listen, with our confusion, Uh, double-mindedness or chaos. Now here's this, and I was thinking about this, I thought about double-mindedness. Listen to to these scriptures. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. That's why, again, if you, you ought to walk in your house, and your house, you love it, your house should be a place of peace. If you look around and it's chaos, that's why you don't sleep good. That's why you don't even think good. It's not a creative. If, you're, if, you're, if you don't have somewhere in your house where you have a creative environment, you know what I mean by creative? You, you like to go sit there, <laughs> but you can't even concentrate because stuff's everywhere. Uh, keep smiling, looking forward. I'm not, I don't, I, nobody knows I'm talking about you or who I'm talking. I'm just... I'm just <laughs> We've all had to develop and work in these areas, picking up after ourselves and and, and taking uh, pride in, in, in just uh, in pursuing excellence and, and being, uh, you know, detailed. Amen? But he says, uh, he says, God's not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. But listen, he says, but let all things be done properly and in an orderly manner. We talked about that. But now listen to what James 1, 7. You, James 1, 7, this is a very important verse. Remember where James talks about, if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally without reproach. But listen to what he says. Verse 7, for let, a man, let not that man expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Listen to that. Uh, the person who doesn't ask in faith, or is in faith one minute and out of faith the next minute, uh, there's a reason for that. There's, in other words, uh, as I was reading that, I, I came up with, I just this thought came to my mind. Instability is the fruit of a lack of discipline. A person that's, that's unstable in all their ways, it's just simply the reason they're unstable is because there's a lack of discipline. 
See, if I'm disciplined to, to, to uh, find out what God has to say, if I'm disciplined in the Word of God, if I'm disciplined in the things and, 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 and keeping things in an order, then, then there's going to be a lot less room for instability. He says the double-minded man, everybody say double-minded, is unstable in all his ways. See, God requires us to be disciples, uh, not vigilantes, doing our own thing. We have, to, we have to pursue His Word. You know, remember Isaiah 119 says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Proverbs 13 verse 18 says, poverty and shame will come to him who neglects discipline, but he who regards reproof will be honored. A lot of great people, a lot of great men failed by doing their own thing instead of doing God's thing. So we have to make sure that, hey, discipline becomes one of these things that's a, that's a priority in our life. Are we disciplined people? See, a, a, a willingness and obedience make good soldiers. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. 2 Timothy 2, 3, Paul said, Suffer hardship with me. Now think about that word hardship. Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlists him as a soldier. Now think about that. He says, we have to, we have to make sure, you know, uh, I found one, this is, this is an important key about discipline. Discipline is actually making yourself do things that you really don't want to do. <laughs> now you think about that in terms of exercise or something, but I'm talking about making yourself, uh, you know, you, you, you walk into your room and say, all right, we're going to clean this mess up. Or walk into the kitchen, we're going to clean this mess up. Or whatever it is in our life in these different areas, making sure that, that we, we've got it in order. That it's not chaotic. Our spiritual life, our, our, in our head, what's going on up here? There's not confusion. There's not disorder. There's not instability. But you know what? We have a sound mind. Why? Because we're consistently developing the thoughts of God and putting the principles of God into our heart, into our life. Does that make sense? You understand? So we're not one way. We're not, you know, wishy-washy like a wave driven and tossed. We're not unstable, but we have a sound mind. Everybody say a sound mind. You're not wondering if God loves you one day and the next day, well, I'm not sure if he did it or, who, you know, why is, it, why is God allowing this to happen? Well, number one, you might need to just use your authority and rebuke the devil, tell him to get out of your life. You know, there's a lot of different things, but, but again, it's, it's, we're, we're, we're developing stability. Man, that's such an important word. You, you cannot make up through a sacrifice what you miss through disobedience or a lack of discipline. Now, let me give you a principle for that. There's a story... And winding this up over in 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15 is the story of uh, Saul and Samuel. Samuel had given Saul specific instructions when they won the victory that Saul was supposed to, the army was supposed to wipe out all the, all the, the people, the animals, everything. There was to be nothing left. And, and the story basically goes that Saul decided that he was going to save some of the animals and then he was going to make a sacrifice uh, you know, he was going to sacrifice all these animals, these good animals for God. And, uh, you know, but, but his motive was wrong. And, and, uh, and so he, he disobeyed God. Listen to, what, listen to what this says in 1 Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? How many know uh, you, can't, you can't disobey God and then try to tip him over here? If he's dealing with you about something and you don't get that right, you're disobeying them, but you want to go over here and try to, uh, uh, you know, lift up a sacrifice of praise. Well, that says, you're honoring me with your lips, but your heart's far from me. I mean, that's how important it is. Or, or just, just, listen, just because you tithe doesn't mean you can live like you want to, like you want to live and disobey the Word of God. Well, well I, I got my tithe in, well, you know. Well, yeah, but you're, you're, God's more interested in you living right than you bringing your tithe into the storehouse. I mean, it all goes together. He's interested in it, but, but He's more interested in you, your life. Not just trying to tip or, or, you know. So he says, uh, listen, he says, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. As I was looking at that yesterday, I thought, I remembered over in Hebrews 10, 5, when it's talking about Jesus, he, Hebrews actually says that, he says, Sacrifice and offerings thou hast not desired, but a body. It says concerning Jesus, a body thou hast prepared for me. God gave Jesus a body to take so he could, he could operate and fulfill the purpose that God had to fulfill in his life. So he said, God is not as interested about the sacrifice and the offering as it is you getting involved and doing your purpose and fulfilling your assignment and being disciplined about it. Hallelujah. You follow me here? So he says, now listen, 
He says to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. Verse 23, he says for rebellion is as the sin of divination. That's witchcraft. Did you know rebellion? How, do you know how, how, um, how important the, this area of rebellion is? To be rebellious? That's why the Bible says rebellion is bound up in the heart of the child and the rod of correction will drive it far from them. That's why kids need to be spanked. The Bible didn't say put them in the corner and give them time out. No, it says bust their butt. <laughs> Amen. The backside. I mean, in other words, you, it, you ain't talking about hurting them, killing them. You know, just a little, a, a little pat with a board or something like that. And, you, and they're already crying. It really wasn't so much the pain, it was the, what they thought they was getting. I mean, they're screaming like bloody murder, and you didn't even barely touch them. You're like, Wah! I had four kids. I know what I'm talking about. It, it, listen, listen, I'm going to give you a little... Can I give you some parental advice? Parental advice? Listen, you're better off busting your kids. You know, when I say busting them, give them, give them a discipline, spanking, than grounding them. Or, or, you know, removing some privileges or whatever. But, and there's something when they get older, you're certain privileges and stuff. But uh, take that phone. Boy, they'll be, they'll be screaming fast these days. Boy, that, kids don't know how to live without that phone. But, but, if, but if, you, if, you, if, you, if you spank them... And then, and they understand why, and you're explaining why. That's called training. And, and the rod of correction drives it far. Uh, we got more and more kids that are just chaotic, out of control, ending up in jail. I, I've seen more stuff on Facebook lately. Uh, kids at school taking the teachers down. I don't know, y'all been seeing some of that stuff? Just, just taking the, slamming the teachers down. I'm like, oh, we're in the last days. I mean, if I just raised my voice in my house wrong, uh, it was trouble, buddy. I mean, I don't know about y'all when y'all were growing up, but when I grew up, whoo, boy. But, but nowadays, your kids are hollering back at mom and dad and slamming the door. But you slammed the door in my house, it was over. It was, it was going to be a star-spangled day. I was going to lay the stripes, and they was going to see the stars. <laughs> I'm just talking about discipline. People need discipline. People need discipline. We need, that's, again, think of discipline, it's not a negative thing, it's training. You're training. They look at you and go, I don't want you to spank me. I'm training you. I'm training you, right here. But in a, in a sense, now flip it back around, we have to train ourselves. And, and listen, your flesh doesn't like you training yourself. He's like, no, we're, gonna, we're getting up and we'll get in the Word. And your flesh is going, ah, I want to sleep. But we're training. Like an athlete has to train and discipline. You have to discipline yourself. And God says, listen, this is very godly. It's very spiritual. We think it kind of a natural. Oh, that's just kind of natural. No, it's very spiritual. And it's, it will produce the fruit of blessing and a, a huge blessing in your life. You understand? Everybody say big blessing. So he says, let me finish this verse. He says, for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft and insubordination. That was the opposite word of, the opposite of discipline is insubordinate. So if you're not a very disciplined person, well, I'm just not very disciplined. You're an insubordinate person. Which really means you need to tap into the fruit of the Spirit, which is self-control. Say, it's in me. Sometimes you just got to acknowledge it. So he says, uh, rebellion is as the sin of divination and insubordination, as iniquity and idolatry. And he said, because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he's rejected you from being king. Let me close with this. We have to examine ourselves. Everybody say examine. We have to examine our spiritual life, our mental life, our physical life, our family life. We have to do it regularly. And we have to see that we're staying on top of the little things and not getting sloppy. Everybody say, the little things. Now, there's a very powerful, short little verse over in Ecclesiastes. It says, it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. It's those little things that are robbing you from your blessing. I'm talking about your breakthrough. It's the little things that are keeping you from going on, moving forward. He said, it's the little foxes. That's why Paul's, the message translation of 1 Corinthians 9 there, he says, no sloppy living for me. And that's a lot of it. You just, some of you guys, and, and, and just keep looking forward, smiling, nobody knows what we're talking about. You're just living sloppy. You're just living sloppy. Don't live sloppy. Come on. Just jerk the slack out, tighten up, and say, all right, no more sloppy living around here. We're tightening up. Going to the gym. 
<laughs> I know, y'all, Pastor, can you wait for the new year for that? We got New Year's resolutions. <laughs> No, tighten up. I'm not just, I'm talking about clean, clean things up. Get some things in order. Go through your closet. Just, just decide, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to wait till the new year. Get some order. Amen? Throw out some stuff. Clean up the kitchen. Amen? Teach your kids. Come here, we're going to show you how to do some dishes. And we're going to have fun doing it. woo I did a lot of dishes growing up. So now I look at my wife and I say, honey, can you do the dishes? I'm going to get the dogs. And, you know, everybody ought to be sharing some responsibilities. Amen? Hallelujah. The, everybody say the little foxes. Little foxes. Somebody said, well, I, Pastor, I read the book. said, don't sweat the small stuff. Listen, you need to sweat the small stuff. That's what's robbing you. It's the, it's the little stuff that's robbing you. Little things that, that you... Oh, remember, somebody, somebody said, never put off tomorrow what you can do today. Yeah, but I'm tired. Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's your flesh talking. You have to... Whoop. All right, well, let me show you who's in charge, Mr. Flesh. It's not you. My flesh doesn't tell me what to do. I tell my flesh what we're going to do. And you know, sometimes, sometimes it's just, listen, you're not going to all of a sudden just go from one end to the extreme all the way to the other, and now you're Mr. Discipline. You're Mr. Discipline. It really doesn't work. But listen, you start possessing a little bit. You just start changing a little bit here, a little bit here. Really, the Bible calls that, in one area, redeeming the time. Re okay, recognize, hey, i got a few hours here. What can I do? Don't just, don't just plop in front of the couch. Don't just watch TV all day. Listen. Listen, are you, you can spend your life wasting it, or you can spend it changing a generation. Amen. Being a light, letting God do something through you and with your life. Don't, don't waste it. Don't waste it. You just got a little bit. Am I helping anybody here? Don't waste it. Be disciplined. And the discipline and the order will cause more to come. It, it's kind of like this. You've heard, if you can't be faithful with a little, how can God make you faithful with much? Because faithfulness has to do with having things in order, having it excellent, having it in the, in the right place, and, and you can do something with it. Especially, and I, and, I, and I didn't mean to, I didn't go a lot of directions here, financially, you need to have your finances in order. You can't go buy a new house if your finances aren't in order, because the first place you've got to go to buy a house is you've got to go, you know, if you're going to get financing or whatever, you've got to have your stuff in order, and they want to see, well, what's this, and your tax return, and you've got to know where all that stuff is. And the important thing is, if you can get to it within, within a couple of two or three hours, that makes all the difference when God gives you an opportunity and the window's really tight and you can jump. Why? Because it's all in order. But the reason, well, it wasn't God. He set it up. He had it ready, but you weren't in order. And so when that window opened and the blessing came, you missed it because you were out of order. You had chaos. Does it make sense? So it wasn't God's fault. It was really your fault because you weren't disciplined. I can tell you love him even more now. Hallelujah. Let me close with this. Let me just say, the, the disciplined man, uh, again, think of it as strength. The disciplined man will have strength to handle the attacks of the enemy. But the, the loose man uh, will fall. If I say strength. Discipline. Think of discipline as strength. Jesus was very disciplined. Very disciplined. Very sound-minded. And uh, listen, there's nobody exempt from... Being perfect, I mean, nobody's perfect in here. Wherever you are, you can, you can get better. And sometimes it's all in the, the fact that, you know, I'm going to make a decision. Everybody say, make a decision. <laughs> to what? I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to train myself. Training. When you do something, usually any, most any fields in life, you're going to cut hair, whatever. you're going to be a nurse or whatever, uh, there's training involved. And in life, there's training. You say, well, I don't, I don't like school. I don't want to go to school because I don't, I don't want to. No, there's, you, you're, you're training right now. You're training for raining. Amen? Did you learn something this morning? I didn't, I didn't go too hard, did I? It's strength. I, 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 want to, I want to see some strong people. I want to see strong people. God's looking for strong people. Hallelujah. Disciplined people. Amen? How many got some work to do? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Listen, we can get all busy doing a lot of things and even almost so spiritual that we're not taking care of some natural things that are, that are opening up the doors for us. Get your files in order. Isn't it interesting, God, when, when somebody, when the king was going to die, he said, go get your house in order. You're going to die. Get your house. Why? Because, listen, even if you're, you're going to exit out of here, if your stuff's all in order, it makes it easy for everybody else. 
You just, don't, you, don't you be checking out of here and you just left a mess for everybody to try to clean up. That, that is selfish. Are you here? <laughs> Amen. Everybody say order. Order is the accurate arrangement of things. God is very much into order. He was, I mean, in the garden, every, he's, heaven is ordered. How many you know when you go to heaven, you ever read in heaven? I mean, three angels and uh, four angels and, and everything. Every, it, it's, there's nothing chaotic. I mean, at the marriage, listen, we're all at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're not going to be looking around going, well, well uh, who's serving? Who, who's, who's, who's bringing the food? God's going to have it all planned out. Actually, the Bible says Jesus is going to be serving us. Isn't that amazing? He's going to be serving us. Discipline. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word this morning. We just give you thanks. We give you praise that you're teaching us, that you, you show us things in your word. Lord, I just thank you for uh, this revelation this morning just to, to sink deep and in our heart, Lord, that we can be disciplined people. We must be disciplined people. Hallelujah. That it's very spiritual. As Paul said, that if we don't discipline ourselves, we can be disqualified from, from actually fulfilling what you have for us. So Lord, teach us to, uh, even especially in the air of our flesh, and we talked about that earlier, this year, Lord, we just thank you that you're teaching us to discipline ourselves, uh, what we're saying, how we're living, how we're spending our time, that, Lord, we, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our spiritual service of worship. And we're not conformed to this world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. We're proving what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. So this morning, we just give you thanks for giving us the strength and the courage to change. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's just a, a decision. Hey, we're going we're gonna to straighten some things up. We're going to clean some things up. We're going to get some, some uh, uh, discipline going. Hallelujah. Changing the way we're doing things. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Now this morning, uh, as far as I was thinking about the altar call, and I think, uh, you know, the, the thing here this morning is, is, is many times when we hear the word, we just have to make the conscious choice that, you know what, we're going to do the word. We're going to do the word. You can sit here and go, oh yeah, that was great, or, or I need to do that. But then James says, the man who hears the word doesn't do the word is like one who looks in a mirror and sees, oh yeah, I can make this adjustment, I can make this change, but goes away and never makes an adjustment, never makes the change. So this morning, hallelujah, I want you to lift your hands to heaven and say, Lord, help me to make the changes that I need to make in my life. There may be something right now, just maybe something that he shows you. He may be showing you a picture or something. Say, Lord, show me an image of things that need to change. And you begin to see it and show me the way it's supposed to be. There's some order in my life. There's some things that need to be changing and moving. Hallelujah. He may, he may begin with a, a picture of your closet or your bedroom or, your, or something, a garage. Who knows? Whatever. But, but there's, there's natural things that you begin to work in your life. You begin to put your faith on it. So, Lord, right now, I thank you for those. And us, we're believing, Lord. Hallelujah. We can be disciplined people. And Lord, it begins with action. So we're going to act on the word, not just be hearers, but doers. We're acting, hallelujah, on the word. Hallelujah. Stand up. Let's thank him for it right now. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Come on, just give him praise a minute. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say, all things are possible because I'm a believer. Hallelujah. I can make the changes. Uh, some of the times, those are the best ways to begin to make changes. You're starting to confess it. Say, I can make the changes. I'm changing. Hallelujah. I'm a disciplined person. Say thank you, Lord, for a sound mind. A disciplined mind. Hallelujah. That means I, I, I'm, I'm very disciplined in my thinking. Hallelujah. What I'm doing. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Come on, just thank him a minute. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. I thank you for breakthroughs in this area. Woo! Come on, thank him a minute more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're well able to do, hallelujah, those things that you're showing us. Thank you, Lord. It's important that you're getting a clear image, hallelujah, right now, of seeing it change. Hallelujah. Don't wait on somebody else. You do it. Don't wait on somebody else. You do it. Hallelujah. You take care of your area. You have a, you have a sphere. I hear the Spirit. You have a sphere. You, even maybe at your office where you are. Uh, Tighten up a little bit. This is for somebody. You, some, there's somewhere, some of you guys where you work, uh, things are a little chaotic. And the Lord says, take care of that. Clean up some things. Get some things in order. And things will run a lot more smoother. You, boy, that's, that's huge. Sometimes efficiency has to do with order. 
getting things that are out of order, and it makes things run smoother, more efficient. And, and how many know when things are running smoother and more efficient, how many know there's peace? How many know it makes life easier on everybody? <laughs> so, Lord, we thank you for order. We thank you, Lord, for that. Hallelujah. Helping us to, hallelujah, clean it up. That's what I hear the Lord saying. Clean it up. You know, some of you, I'm just different things here, going out different. Clean it up. Sometimes it's just cleaning it up. Clean it up. And, and man, you'll walk in there, you go, whoo, man, this is good. Now I can rest today. Hallelujah. Clean it up. Clean it up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, just keep praying just a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many know God's good? He cares about us. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's real important when you get to the end of things like this, and, uh, you know, sometimes we're ready to leave and take off, but sometimes the Spirit's uh, quickening. The, the, the gifts of the Spirit will get in operation. And so we don't want to just kind of shut down, but make sure the Lord's doing everything that He wants to do. Or Prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. So sometimes you just kind of slip in uh, to a realm of prophecy and begin to speak things by the Spirit. That what is edifying, it's encouraging, it's exhorting. Hallelujah. And the Lord, listen, the Lord's not mad at any one of us. <laughs> Say, He's not mad at me. He, he, he lovingly cares so much for us that He's given us His Word to instruct us. And he gives, us, uh, he gives us space to repent. He gives, us, he gives us time. But the main thing is you don't want to take advantage and, and uh, miss different things. Because there'll be, there'll be opportunities that are coming your way. There'll be, there'll be just, uh, you know, it's kind of like this. Again, this is something coming. You know, sometimes we'll have people over at the house. And, and it, how many of you ever scrambled at the last minute? You're trying to get everything cleaned up and straightened up and everything. But if you would have been a little bit more ahead of the ball game, life would have been a lot smoother. Am I know what I'm talking about? Now, see, some of these things in our family, we learned, we kind of learned and dealt with it because uh, over the years, Don and I, we, we had flipped houses. We'd buy a house and, and we'd be in it, you know, we'd, try, we'd buy our certain, you know, to rent, and we just made extra money that way. And so our kids would have to live a, a lot cleaner because, you know, you got your house for sale and people are coming to look at your house. And, and on Sunday, you know, instead of going home and, and everybody got to take a Sunday afternoon nap, people would want to come look at it and they're like, we got to go, we got to get to go. You know, so. So we had to do things that we didn't feel like doing. And so that's a big word for you right there. Start doing some things that you'll, you'll, you'll have a battle with your flesh a little bit. It, it may be at work. It may be uh, at home. You want to sit down and rest? Listen, you'll rest in the, you can rest in the millennium. Right now, it's time, to, it's time to get some things in order, straighten up. And so, so you'll have a battle there a little bit. But as you get going, you'll be so happier. Then it will create a, a greater and freer amount of rest for you. Does that make sense? All right, hallelujah. Miss Denise, she's got a few announcements before you. Don't forget the chili cook-off tomorrow night. We'll have fun. Amen. The good news is the Holy Spirit's our helper. Amen. Amen. So he's going to help us to clean up our lives and do whatever we need to do. Well, like Pastor Bracken said, the chili cook-off tomorrow night at 645, men. Do sign up on your way out. If you haven't already, sign up to bring an item either chili or another item. There is no cost, but we would love for all of the men to be here for that. You guys have a blessed week. You are dismissed. Before I lift my cares, I will lift my arms.